Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. Starting off the news this week, a paper published in the journal Juul has looked at the economic impact of switching to renewable energy and has concluded that the costs of a switch to renewable energy has previously been overestimated. Researchers at the University of Oxford estimated that up to £10.2 trillion or $12 trillion could be saved by switching to renewable energy sources, both due to the rising costs of non-renewables and the falling costs of renewables. It's worth noting that this estimate is at the higher end of the scale, however, with the lower estimate being £4.3 trillion or $5 trillion. The report considers the higher estimated savings to be much more likely to be accurate, and even suggests that certain economic and technological theories suggest this saving could be higher still. Overall, the report heavily encourages a rapid green energy transition to both combat climate change and save money. In other news, a study published in the journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences has analysed a fairly uncommon type of diamond from a meteorite and concluded that it likely came from the mantle of a dwarf planet from the inner solar system. The study's authors said that there is strong evidence for a newly discovered formation process, both for this type of diamond and the more common variant we are used to here on Earth. The researchers believe that this diamond was formed after the dwarf planet collided with a large asteroid that tore it apart. They hope that their findings can be used in the manufacturing of ultra-hard materials in industries such as mining. And now over to Ben with the news. Thanks Doug. Also in the news for this week is another new paper naming and describing a new species of sauropodomorph, this time from Germany. Amazingly, the material this new dinosaur is based on had been in the collection of the University of Tübingen for a hundred years, being labelled as a species of Platyosaurus. However, this recent analysis finds it to actually have several features of the skeleton that show it to be a member of a more derived sauropodomorph grouping known as the Massapodans. As such, the animal is named Tubingosaurus meafritzorum, adding to our increased understanding and knowledge of the diversity of this lineage of dinosaurs. It also again shows the benefits of looking through historic paleontological collections. Some incredible finds that have sometimes been overlooked for a century can be made in these places. There's also been a fascinating paper published this week that's investigated how exactly the skull evolved in early tetrapods. The tetrapods, the group including all four-limbed vertebrates, such as us, are known to have undergone a fin-to-limb transition early on in their evolution as they adapted to life in increasingly shallower waters and eventually on land. However, this new study investigates the effects of tetrapod skull evolution, as tetrapods actually have fewer skull bones than the fish they evolved from. The paper therefore uses a method known as anatomical network analysis, mapping out which bones connect to which, as well as how many skull bones there are across fossil and living species. The researchers discovered that the fewer skull bones in tetrapods resulted in more complex connections between them, as they all had to contact more bones and the skull also became a more solid, single unit compared to fish skulls. Interestingly, they found that diversity in skull bone attachments decreased at the time of tetrapod origins, indicating that, for some reason, these modifications of the skull actually limited tetrapod evolution, similar to the decrease in limb variability that had occurred 10 million years prior. So, this new paper opens up a lot of new questions, providing some interesting future research opportunities into why exactly this drop in diversity occurred, and what it means for the evolution of our earliest ancestors. Back to Doug in the studio. Thank you, Ben. Well, that's it for this week's 7 Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you on Sunday for the next episode of our South Africa series.